Welcome to It's Happening in Grand Prairie. I'm Georgia Clemson, and we have a very special guest for you this morning, all in pink. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chad Whitney. Yes, ma'am. Battalion Chief for the Grand Prairie Fire Department. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am, it is. We're so glad to have you today. Thank you for having me. I know that our Fire Chief fight would be here, but he sent you on his behalf to represent the whole department, hasn't he? He has, he has. Uh, Chief Fight unfortunately was out of town for a meeting, so uh, he, he asked me to be here in his place. How wonderful. Yes. We're so glad that you are here. And everybody is wanting to know about the fire department. We have so many things happening. I know we mentioned uh, that you're in pink. Yes, ma'am, we are. The whole fire department's wearing pink this month. And tell us about that. The fire department has chose to wear, uh, wear pink this month in, in, in support of not only breast cancer, but really all cancers in general for women's health. Uh, we, uh, we sell the shirts, uh, we make them and we sell them, uh, and uh, we take all the donations we get from the, from the shirt and we donate that to uh, breast cancer research and cancer research in general. That is wonderful. Now, if I wanted to get a shirt, where would I buy it? The shirts can be purchased at the fire stations, uh, mm -hmm. any of the nine fire stations here in town, and uh, they're $10 each. And uh, we actually brought one today for you. Oh, wow. Uh, they're, uh, it's a new design this year and uh, we, we thought you might like to have one. That is fantastic. So. Thank you so You're much. You're welcome. That is great. So if, I, if someone wants to purchase, they can go to the fire station anytime? Yes, ma'am. We're open 24-7. That's great. <laughs> that makes it convenient. Now, um, I know that everybody's just getting settled in on Station 1. Yes. Tell us something. Give us a report and update on that. Station one was finished in November of last year, and uh, we've occupied it for almost a complete year so far. And uh, it's just a fabulous building. Uh, we actually uh, condensed some of the units into into that one building, so we now have a fire engine, a fire truck. The battalion chiefs live there, and then we also have an ambulance, and our air shop is in that that facility also. So it's in full force now. Full force. And where are you located personally? What station? At Station 1 on oh. 510 West Main. So you know everything about Station yes, 1. Yes, ma'am. That's great. And what else throughout, uh, throughout the city are stations? Uh, well, we have Station 10 fixing to come on board. Uh, it is set to open in summer of 2016. And uh, that station will be located on the peninsula in South Grand Prairie on the corner of Balboa and Grand Peninsula. And that station will actually house a uh, Quint fire engine and a ambulance to uh, serve the citizens in far south Grand Prairie. And that has been needed for a long time. Yes, so ma'am. It's great. Very timely. Yes, ma'am. Very timely. Yes. And, I, and I think it will benefit those citizens greatly. Yes, and have you had the groundbreaking yet? We have. We had the groundbreaking, uh, I believe, a month ago, and uh, now they're in full force construction. That is wonderful. Now, um, what else is happening with, uh, with the fire department? Have you do you have any new people that you? We hired? do. Uh, we uh, are we're scheduled to hire 18 people to uh, staff our new fire station. Uh, so we're uh, we hired the majority of those firefighters already, uh, but we still have a, a few more to go. And most of those firefighters are in the process of being trained through fire school and through uh, paramedic school and paramedic. Uh, FTO, field training officer rideouts mm -hmm. is what we call it. So by the time all those firefighters that we hired get through school and get trained will be about the time that Station 10 is ready to open. And about how many um, firefighters do we have in the city? We have about 240. 240. Yes, With the, the 18 that we hired for With Station 10. The new ones yes, coming on. Well, that is exciting. Um, tell me about um, our insurance status. Well, in 2016, the Grand Prairie Fire Department is going to undergo a review to try to uh, lower our uh, insurance service office rating. It's called the ISO rating. And when we lower that number closer to one that we get, uh, it uh, saves uh, citizens and businesses on their insurance rates. So the, the lower we can get that number, the better it is for our citizens, uh, and cheaper it is for their insurance. And where are we now on that? We're actually, uh, we've improved our water system with the help of the water department. Uh, we're, we're, we've increased our times. Uh, the addition of station 10 will increase that because it's more personnel and, and a quicker response time. 
And uh, so it's a real giant conglomerate of different uh, factors, but as we decrease each separate factor, the overall rating lowers, which increases uh, our rating. And when will we get the results of that for the next? We're hoping to have the review in 2016. I see. And then once the review is done by ISO, then they will come back and give us our new rating. And then the citizens will start to see that reflection on their insurance ratings. Well, we can look forward to that. We can. That will be great. And I know something else is coming up in November. What happens in November? Uh, as, as the people can see, uh, in uh, November, the firefighters will be doing No Shave November, where we kind of uh, let our mustaches grow. And, uh, and the reason we do that is to support men's health. Uh, we spend a lot of time in October supporting women's health and women's uh, battle against cancer. And in November, uh, we let the mustaches grow a little long and try to draw attention to them. So when people do ask us, we can bring up No Shave November, which supports men's health and, uh, and men's uh, prostate cancer awareness. Do you do a fundraiser along with that, or we just get to enjoy seeing Well, you no just shave. get the privilege of seeing <laughs> No Shave November at this point, yes. Well, that's a good thing. It that is. is very good. And um, it's nice to know that not only do you risk your lives for us every day, but you're also interested in the community and contributing, giving back in that way. We're so blessed to have you all. Well, thank you very much. Now, tell, tell me just a little bit about how you came to Grand Prairie. I came to Grand Prairie uh, in 1999. Uh, I was hired uh, as one of the group that was going to take over EMS originally when we took over in 2000. I came from uh, the Lancaster Fire Department, mm -hmm. wanted to move to a bigger city with more growth and mm -hmm. more opportunity, and, uh, and we definitely got that here in Grand Prairie. Yes, and Chief Fight has really been a great leader in that, in making us the best we could be. He has. Uh, we're fortunate to have Chief Fight with us, and uh, he, he truly does a lot for our fire department and our citizens. He does. Now tell me also briefly about your family. Uh, I'm married. I have been for 15 years and I have uh, two young boys, uh, one 10 year old and one six year old. So, oh, and they go to Mansfield schools, They correct? do. We live in Mansfield and they go to Mansfield schools and we, uh, we enjoy a lot of reading and letter practice and, uh, and math at the home. <laughs> oh, I bet you do. And we know that your family has to be very supportive with the profession that you're in, and we're thankful for them as well. Thank you. They have been quite supportive. Well, thank you so much for being with us. We do appreciate all you do for our citizens. I speak for everyone. I would like to speak on behalf of everyone saying thank you and God bless you and keep you safe. Thank you very much. Thanks for the opportunity. Yes, sir. And we'll be right back. A difference. Pass it on. A message from the Foundation for a Better Life. Welcome back and welcome to our next guest, Mr. Bill Moser representing the Grand Prairie Chamber of Commerce. Thanks welcome. once again for having me, Georgia. We always appreciate the opportunity to talk about the Chamber on your show. Yes, and the Chamber's always doing a lot of good things for our city and I know you like to give credit to your sustaining members. Yes. So why yes. don't we do that? We always want to start out with our sustaining members because they do uh, sustain us. Yes. Um, these businesses give over and above their uh, normal membership contribution to help cover the monthly expenses of the chamber. And we have several different levels. The highest level is Emerald. That's uh, Hong Kong Marketplace, Asia Times Square. Matthew Lowe and his family always doing a lot for the chamber. Um, and our Asian division. We have Platinum members, Airbus Helicopters, Classic Chevrolet, the Thompson Group, and my personal favorite, Grand Bank of Texas. Uh, we have the gold sponsors, ER at Grand Prairie, JMH Printing, who always does all of our printing and stuff for us, uh, Medical Center of Arlington, Neighborhood Credit Union, and Encore Electric Delivery, which I guess we couldn't survive with if they didn't deliver the electric so we could do these shows right. and things. Our silver level sponsors are Fast Signs at Highway 67 and Traders Village. Uh, I'll mention Traders Village again later too because they're an integral part of our uh, Christmas uh, Santa picture stuff. Uh, and then at a bronze level, we have uh, Baylor Medical Center of Irving, Bean Massey Burge Funeral Home, the City of Grand Prairie, Funeral, 
Funeria del Angeli uh, Funeral Home, uh, Grand Prairie Ford, uh, La Patrona, uh, Haynes and Boone Law Firm, Lockheed Martin Missile and Fire Control, Sam's Club, Texas State Hospital, uh, Texas Health Arlington Memorial Hospital, Titan Contractors, Verizon Theater at Grand Prairie, Victor's Event Room, Walmart, and of course, Uncle Bob's Self Storage. What a great group. It is. It's and a it's great growing, isn't it? And it is. It gets bigger every year, and we always like to have more people to join because, you know, just like at home, the, the expenses don't go down. They just keep going up. <laughs> Absolutely. I can identify with that. Now, tell us what else is happening. Well, November, because it's Thanksgiving and, and the start of the holiday season, a lot of our stuff gets a little truncated. Plus, we concentrate a lot of our effort in conjunction with the city on Prairie Lights because the city allows the chamber to provide uh, the pictures with Santa, and so does Traders Village. We do Traders Village pictures with Santa on the Saturdays and Sundays after Thanksgiving and up to Christmas. I think Christmas is a Friday this year, so it'll be the week before that. Um, and then the chamber has Prairie Lights, and I'll mention it again, or cha the chamber has Santa at Prairie Lights starting the night of Thanksgiving and every night until the 23rd of December. Wow. Not the 24th, the 23rd, because right. of course Santa can't be there on the 24th. He is he busy. Other duties yes. that night, yes. But the pictures are only on the weekend or are they every No, the pictures night? at Traders Village are only on the weekend, but okay. the pictures at Prairie Lights are every night and there's different packages. Um, on Saturdays and Sundays we overlap with Prairie Lights and with Traders Village, but it's I actually see. two different times because Traders Village is during the day and Prairie Lights is, is at night, but it's every night in the, um, what is it called, the holiday, holiday playland, holiday Anyway, it's where you park in the right, middle of the, right. of the prairie lights. You drive through, you see about half of it, and then you park in the middle, and there's free rides for the kids, there's food, uh, there's uh, the walk-through um, prairie lights display, and there's pictures with Santa. And thanks to the city, or the, yeah, the city for allowing us to be part of it, the chamber benefits um, in a revenue sharing plan with the city on the sale of the prairie lights photos, which are very reasonable. And we have some, and Santa's always there. <laughs> yes, and looking great. And looking great. With a beard and everything. With a, well, of course, Santa <laughs> always has a beard. <laughs> um, other than that, though, um, we, do, we don't have a lot of our events. Like, for example, this month we don't have a luncheon. We don't have a uh, business after hours because that would be on Thanksgiving. Um, our Hispanic networking event is the same week, a, week as Thanksgiving, so we don't have mm -hmm. it. We're not, as far as I know, we're not having the uh, African American networking. But we do have three mm -hmm. events um, this month. Um, we have our regular coffee cup, connect, coffee cup connection, which is... Uh, uh, the, fir the second Friday in November, and it's, um, it's at 7.45 to 9 at the chamber. It's free. Well, it's a dollar, but your card and your dollar go into a pot and you can win. And this, uh, this month, the speaker is going to be a gentleman by the name of John Sparks, and he's going to talk about good to great on Twitter. Um, I don't tweet or twit or whatever it's called so I wouldn't know how to go from good to great I could go from nothing to something but yeah but John could teach us how to do that you have uh, to start somewhere Bill. right I have to, I have to start <laughs> tweeting somehow our luncheon lead which is every third Thursday uh, this month it's October the 17th and it's um, I'm sorry it's November the 17th and it's always at mixed up burgers at the airport and for $10, you get your meal and the speaker and the gratuities included and everything else. You have to RSVP uh, at least uh, by Friday so Alex knows what to order for you for, for uh, food. And this month, it's going to be, I think it's going to be another interesting topic. It's a gentleman uh, by the name of Kyle Gibson. Kyle Gibson is going to be with Kyle Bryson at Mixed Up Burgers. And Kyle works for the Criminal District Attorney's Office in Tarrant County, and he's going to be discussing Internet safety uh, and how to, I guess, keep your computer safe and not open up things you're not supposed to. So yes, that's the luncheon lead. I need to go to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we all do. And every year the, the criminals figure out a better way to get in, so oh, we need do. to keep up to date. So mm -hmm. that's the luncheon lead on the, on the 17th, and then the Coffee Cup Connections on Friday the 
I think it's the 11th. I'm not sure what the date is on that, that Friday, but it's the, it's the second Friday. Mm -hmm. And then the last event we have, other than, like I said, Prairie Lights, is the African American Professional Networking event is November the 10th. And the speaker for that is Sonia Wells. And her topic is going to be Lifestyle Transformation Strategy. I kind of like my lifestyle. I'm not sure I want to transform it, but you never know. There could she, be something you could learn. That's right. <laughs> she may have some great ideas. And that is November the 10th. It's at the Chamber offices on Conover, and it's between 7 and 8.30 p.m. Uh, so those are the mm -hmm. only three events that we actually have going, uh, are recurring events that we have going in the month. But again, I'd like to reiterate Prairie Lights. Um, I know, I think last month uh, we had somebody, that, uh, Beverly came on and talked about it, but it's, it's something that the city of Grand Prairie and the businesses of Grand Prairie really get behind and it's growing every year. Um, it helps out the chamber in terms of fundraising with the Santa pictures and it's really a lot of fun. It's something you can do with your whole family. So try to come out to Prairie Lights and, and also Traders Village. I mean, Traders Village does us a, a real good service. They build our sets and everything for our Santa. Um, and they provide us the space mm -hmm. and allow us to do the pictures there. I mean, it's a nice symbiotic relationship. We take the pictures and there are people like that and then we get the money for it. So uh, Alan and Jerry and all those people out of Traders Village, I want to, we, the Chamber wants to thank them too. But try to come out to Traders Village, try to come out to Prairie Lights and, and, see, the, and see Santa. Yeah, you have to be there to see Santa at least. Yep. Thank you so much, Bill, for joining us. No problem. Always appreciate getting the word out about the Chamber. Certainly. And we'll be right back. Jessica, we need to leave right now. I need to get something. Dance recitals are so boring. There's a meeting no one knows. Wait until we said So free. what's the empty suitcase for? The grand prize trophy. Yeah. Confidence. Pass it on. I was born to be somebody. Welcome back and welcome to our next guest, Libby Clausen from the Grand Prairie Arts Council. Welcome, Libby. Thank you so much, Georgia. It's always good to see you and always to hear what's happening with the Arts Council. We do, we have a busy schedule. Uh, we wanted to let folks know how successful our juried art show was. We had it for the first time in the art gallery lobby at the Uptown Theater in September during our fall theater production. And it was such a success. We had 37 artists from 16 cities around North Texas who came to Grand Prairie to show their work. We had 104 pieces of artwork on display and we were able to give away $3,400 in wow. prize money. And um, we actually sold three pieces of work this year, which was very exciting for a total of $950 that went out to the artist for three pieces of work that sold. And one of them was a local artist, Gary Kelly, one of his pieces in the show sold. How wonderful. That keeps the artist coming back. Absolutely. Yes. We are so thrilled. So we were, it, it was such a success at the Uptown, and I talked with Doug, the manager over there, and we've all agreed we love having it there, so I think that will be a, the permanent venue for our annual juried art show. And it will just grow and get better and better, won't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. It, it was really nice, and having it during our fall show, all of our patrons got to see it, and that's actually where the sales came from. So it, it worked out really well all the way around, and we're just thrilled to put another event in the Uptown. Yes, that's perfect. What else, Libby? Uh, we are really excited to let folks know, once again, also at the Uptown is our annual fundraising haunted house. Always a lot of fun. Our set designer, Matt Betts, just loves Halloween, and he goes all out. And you'd not believe we, t we turned the studio theater over there at the Uptown into a really great haunted house that's a little different every year. So if you've been before, you can still come back. And it's so reasonably priced. It's just $5 a person. And it is a fundraiser for us. So it's all volunteers that work on it. And then the money goes to help fund upcoming projects. What's new for this year is we have added a time slot. It is on Saturday, October 31st, Halloween. We're going to be open from noon to 2 because the Parks and Recreation Department have moved their trick-or-treat down at Market Square from 11 to 1. So we're going to open from noon to 2 and if you have some younger kids who'd like to come we're going to kind of tone it down. Uh, we won't have the people jumping out and scaring them in the house. Right. So you can bring them down and we'll just have people leading them through the house and it won't be quite as scary. So noon to 2 would be a great time for young
younger kids to come and it'll be in the daytime. And then that night from 6 to 10, we'll be open our regular hours and we'll have scarers in there and we're calling it a, a fright fest from 6 to 10 on Halloween night. You'll have all the full-fledged scary people there. Absolutely, and uh, the South Grand Prairie High School National Honor Society has offered to help us, so we're really looking forward to that. We have lots of students from South that have agreed to help us. A makeup artist is coming from South to help us, So, and some kids from St. Michael's Catholic Church are coming, so it's gonna be a lot of fun. So we invite everybody, it's a good reason to come downtown on Halloween yes. to enjoy our haunted house, and it, it's, it's really, Quite, quite a, a lot of fun, so and please join us for that. It's nice that you have the ap afternoon option. Absolutely, mm -hmm. we're really looking forward to that for our younger guests, yes ma'am. That's ma great, and what about auditions? Do you have anything else coming up? Well, or we are so excited. Our holiday production is underway. We had auditions and we have cast 38 wow. um, adults and children in the, our holiday production of Oliver. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, a dozen workhouse orphans that are all kids. They're really the star of the show this year, the, the dozen kids that are mm -hmm. the workhouse orphans. We have a couple of younger ones that are gonna be in the show, and and then we have a great cast, a regional cast, a lot of local folks, um, a lot of folks from the, throughout the area who have come to be in the show with us. Uh, they've started rehearsals this week, and that production will be the first two weekends in December. And tickets are already on sale, and people are buying them, so we would encourage people. And um, Oliver may not normally be seen as a holiday production, but our director, Dr. Denise Rodrigue, is adding some touches in there that are gonna make it quite holiday. Oh, good. We're gonna have a holiday quartet that's going to be singing Christmas carols in the lobby as well as in different parts of the show and there's going to be some surprises in this show that that folks will see and it's really going to you're going to want to make it part of your holiday season this year. Yes, Dr. Rodriguez is very creative, isn't she? She absolutely is. And uh, they've, they're already working on the sets. Uh, they've blocked the first number with all the kids, the food, glorious food number. It's, mm -hmm. it's gonna be a, a really fun show. So we encourage people, it's December 4th through 6th and 11th through 13th at the Uptown. Uh, you can call the box office at the Uptown to get tickets or you can go on our website at artsgp.org and go ahead and get your tickets there. And it's, it's really gonna be a lot of fun. We're looking forward to that. We have several families that are joining us in there. It's always fun to have families in the show and this is a, a, a our uh, holiday production is a, a real source of family entertainment. So we're looking forward to everybody coming and joining us for that. And it's great to get your tickets in advance like you said. Absolutely, then you can pick your seats. And we have uh, two matinees, Saturday and Sunday, so if you don't want to come in the evening, you've got plenty of time to come on uh, the matinees too. And you can bring all ages to this, correct? Yes, ma'am, absolutely. Our fall production was adult. We are. This is family friendly. Please bring everybody. Um, some parts of the show have been changed a little, so you don't have to worry about your kids seeing someone beaten up and murdered as right, happens in Oliver, right. that won't happen in this show. Oh good. So uh, yes, bring it's, it's gonna be fun for all ages. That's wonderful. Absolutely. Now Libby, I know that it's a little early, but could you give us just a little sneak preview of what's coming up for the next year? Oh, I am so excited. We have been working on our theater season for 2016, and we are very pleased to announce our spring production is going to be Driving Miss Daisy. And it's going to star Dr. Denise Rodrigue and Eric Kreiner. Oh, how and perfect. And then John Morehouse, who is a friend of ours from Dallas who has done several of our shows. So that's going to be a great, we're gonna put it on the main stage. Driving Miss Daisy isn't done a lot anymore. Mm -hmm. So we're real excited about bringing that show. And it's a non-musical, so doing a straight play. Good. And then for the summer, so excited, we're gonna be doing Mary Poppins. That so, will be exciting. That will be so popular. Yes, ma'am. Out of the original Mary Poppins. So we'll put a big cast on the stage in June for our summer musical. Uh, for the kids in the summer, for our Summer in the Arts children's production, we're doing Little Mermaid Junior. And that's always popular. Oh, so we're looking yes. forward to putting 50, 60 kids on stage in the summer for that. In the fall, we're going to do more of a Halloween theme again, new musical, The Addams Family, as a mm -hmm, musical. Mm -hmm. So that'll be our fall. And then at Christmas, we're real excited. We're partnering um, with um, Councilman Dick Frigo and his wife, Gisela, mm -hmm. to do Hansel and Gretel, a Christmas opera. 
Oh. Gisela has wanted us. She's originally from Germany. Yes. And she misses her childhood days when Hansel and Gretel was always somewhere at Christmas. And she has been asking us for years to put it on. So this year we're partnering with the city and with uh, Gisela, and we're going to do a Christmas opera, the original, but it will be in English. <laughs> That's good. Of, of Hansel and Gretel. <laughs> mm -hmm. So we're very excited. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to have all ages in that too, uh, a lot of singing. It's going to be a real challenge. We're going to try to get a symphony involved, um, some, some folks that can really sing the opera parts, but mm -hmm. we're also going to be sure and include our regular folks, because we know they're up for the challenge. Oh, yes. So um, Gisela's very excited. She's helping us get the extra money that we need to do this special production. So next Christmas will be real special for us doing Hansel and Gretel, the yes. Christmas opera. And the whole year is going to be special. I'm so glad you shared that with us. Thank you. And next month, uh, we'll be back with information on how people can go ahead and buy their season tickets. Great. Well, thank you so much for being here, Libby. Thank you. We appreciate it thank and you all that much. you do for our city. Thank you. And we thank you for join us, joining us today. I know that we have many people who watch us very regularly, and we thank you for joining us, and God bless you all. And I'm Georgia Clemson reminding you that it's happening in Grand Prairie.